All right, y'all, welcome back to Covered Arms Channel. All right, so today we're checking out a recommendation that I was getting for this specific German unit. So this is their C, C Battalion, C Battalions. I don't know. It's basically like their naval boarding team from my understanding, which is kind of akin to like VBSS, Visit, Board, Search, and Caesar teams. Now, these guys look pretty freaking legit, and I understand why this one was getting recommended because you guys already know I'm a big fan of CQB, and especially when I'm talking about like CQB, like in the maritime aspect, especially when you're talking about ship clearing. So these guys look pretty legit. This video, I think, is going to cover them pretty well. It's about nine and a half minutes long. And I will say we're going to be using the auto translate. So some things might get lost in translation, but I think it'll still give us a good appreciation for what these folk are about. And also, you know, what they're actually operating with as far as like the gear and whatnot. So yeah, I'm excited. Let's get into it. Das äh, Seebataillon als solches ist halt sehr, sehr breit aufgestellt, heißt wir haben ein extrem weites äh, Fähigkeitsspektrum. Hmm. Okay, so again, you guys already know we have to start this by checking out some of the gear and kind of seeing what we're looking at. So, okay, we have MP5s, which is pretty much what you would expect for a German unit, and you got some G36s. Um, so it looks like some of the helmets are kind of different, but... I'm noticing, looks like, I'm not sure if these are cameras or maybe a flashlight. This one looks like a camera. Okay, so these guys look pretty cool, pretty high speed. I'm liking the, the kit load out here, but I am noticing that their MP5s don't have red dots. And I mean, you don't need them, but I'll say CQB with, with iron sights, especially the MP5 iron sights, is um, not that fun. <laughs> not fun at all. Yeah, so ship stuff is pretty close quarters and pretty like, you know, confined. So you're gonna need some short weapons for sure. Okay. <laughs> the editing is pretty sweet, not gonna lie. Stefano, ich bin 29 Jahre alt und derzeit eingesetzt als Teamführer des äh, Bordeinsatzteams in der Gernförde. Das äh, Seebataillon mhm. als solches ist halt sehr, sehr breit aufgestellt, heißt wir haben ein extrem weites äh, Fähigkeitsspektrum. Im Endeffekt ist die Bordeinsatzkompanie oder das Boarding halt dafür da, um äh, verdächtige zivile Wasserkontakte anzuhalten, mhm. zu durchsuchen, zu kontrollieren, ähm, um gegebenenfalls auch ähm, Bargo-Kontrollen halt durchzuführen, um das dann auch durchzusetzen. Okay, so yeah, they're basically like the VBSS. So they'll see if there's like anything that looks suspicious, like any suspicious vessels or, or what have you. Or if there's one that was possibly under hostile control, these guys, I'm guessing, will go out and, you know, clear out the ship, make sure everything is kosher, make sure there's no sort of pirate situation going on. Nice. The maritime stuff. Yep, we're going to see some helicopter stuff, of course. And the fast roping. Yeah, that's exactly what I wanted to see. Hell yeah. Damn, that's a pretty... Well, that's a pretty high hover for a, a ship fast rope, not gonna lie. I mean, landing on an area like this kind of affords them a little bit more, you know, wiggle room for how high they can actually insert from. But okay, it looks like, yeah, I like how they're inserting in the corner of the deck here so they can still push out enough and pull security off of the rope. I like that. I'm liking the cell tags on their helmets and stuff. Looks pretty sick. Meine Aufgabe ist, wie der Name schon sagt, das Führen des Bordeinsatzteams als solches. Heißt, ich habe viele koordinative Aufgaben. Ich muss den Überblick wahren über das ganze Geschehen, über die Operation an sich und mhm. aus dem vorhandenen Lagebild, was sich dann durch die einzelnen Situationen im Endeffekt generiert, meinen Nutzen ziehen und meine Entscheidungen dann fällen, um den Auftrag bestmöglich zu erfüllen. Moin Moin, mhm. ich bin Oberschaften von der Christopher, ich bin 30 Jahre alt. Ich bin Moin Moin. Ist das like a Finnish thing? Maybe I just heard that wrong. Uh, maybe unless it's a German thing too. Okay, is that Moin Moin? Ich bin eingesetzt in okay. Bordeinsatz Team als Alpha 1, quasi der Risikoanalyst. Mein Job ist es quasi, die unmittelbare Bedrohung zu erkennen und dementsprechend auch zu handeln, meinem Teamführer hmm. bestmöglich zuzuarbeiten, weil ich im Train ganz vorne der erste Mann bin. Das heißt quasi, ich melde meinem Teamführer das, was ich vorne als erstes okay. sehe. Ich bin zuständig für die Nahbereichssicherung. Ich habe hier quasi einmal meine Ausrüstung ausgebreitet. Wir haben hier Oh nice. Okay, they're going to go over some of the some of the gear. So it is kind of cool how they're going to each individual and kind of explaining their roles because yeah, you can imagine with operations like this they 
I mean, they seem pretty simple, like, you know, you're inserting and you're clearing out a ship, but there are a lot of things you need to consider as far as the coordination with other elements, especially depending on if you're going to be using air or using a small boat. But once you actually get to that ship, things can get like pretty crazy pretty quick. So you need to be able to like really move everybody around appropriately, especially if you didn't have like the best recon for each specific ship and you're not really too sure of the layouts. You're going to need to like slow down a little bit and game plan it while you're actually sort of on the X and doing everything. Of course, in a perfect world, you could just use the initiative and clear out the ship without having too much coordination because people are kind of just using the initiative. But there's going to be parts of the ship where you really need to make sure you're locking those areas down so you're not exposing your guys to any danger areas without having them covered. And especially if you're gonna be working with multiple teams like a raft and a, a fast rope or something, you wanna be able to set like sort of boundary lines. All right. Check it out. Das Nachtsichtgerät Exact, das heißt das Nachfolgerät von der Lucy, ist quasi nur dafür da, um die Nachtkampffähigkeit zu gewährleisten. Die Sandtasche, um mhm. halt die Selbst- und Kameradenhilfe zu gewährleisten. Drei Knetlichter für Sichtzeichen bei Nacht. Okay, so yeah, chem lights are always a nice thing for marking. They're pretty much good for day and night, uh, depending on you know what sort of operation you're running. Sometimes you might not want chem lights kind of glowing around everywhere but they are amazing for marking, which is very, very important for CQB, especially in like a ship. You wanna make sure you're marking off areas that you've cleared out so you're not having to re-clear or so there's no like uncertainty with certain parts of the ship, if it was cleared out or not. You need to be able to like sort of leave a, a breadcrumb trail of, of every place that you've actually cleared out. So, okay, so we see some night vision. We see like their, their vest here. And then they go into their marking stuff. Okay. Das heißt, rot würde heißen Lager unklar, grün heißt Lager klar und blau würde halt signalisieren verletzten Lager. Ja. Yep. Dann okay. als sehr wichtiges Untensiv für meine auf meinen Aufgabenbereich einmal ein sogenannter Winkelspiegel, den ich halt in verschiedenen Positionen verstellen kann. Okay. Ich ihn auch der Länge nach verstellen kann. <lacht> das ist kind of cool. Und halt auch an Stellen äh, suchen zu können, wo ich quasi mit dem bloßen Auge nichts sehen kann. Ja. Sehr okay. I don't know how to feel about that. I mean there's definitely some utility. It kind of reminds me of like the old school like periscopes from like World War One or something. But it's definitely got some utility, especially in a ship where, you know, it gets very, very confined very quickly. So like being able to insert yourself into a confined space, especially an awkward space like we're seeing here, can get very sketchy because it's going to be very, very slow. And if you get guys caught up in that small danger area multiple times, then you're gonna lose your team pretty quickly. So being able to at least get a good idea for the area is nice. Of course, you do run the risk of being at that danger area a little bit longer and sort of showcasing yourself as far as like him casting the shadows and whatnot. But if you can get more situational awareness about the room, you can kind of paint that picture to everybody else. And if you do see a threat, you can utilize certain things like you know, uh, a flashbang or even like a CS grenade, like a less than lethal. You can use that to maybe incapacitate them a little bit. Or again, if you at least know where they are, you have a better fighting chance than just kind of trying to take it without knowing what the area looks like. Der wichtigste Utensil für mich habe ich hier ein sogenanntes Mini Wall. Das ist dafür da, um begaste Container quasi zu überprüfen, ob dort schädliche Stoffe drin sind. Das heißt CO2 bzw. Kohlendioxid oder Kohlenmonoxid. Das lässt sich dann dementsprechend Make sure there's enough oxygen so you can actually operate there. MP5 mit Laserlichtmodul. Zusätzlich könnte man hier oben noch ein EOTech Visier anbringen. Dies ist aber jetzt momentan nicht dabei. Okay. Ja. Okay, so I guess he's saying that they do run EOTEX every now and again. Um, I guess we're just not seeing it here, but I'm liking their setup here. They have the pressure pad with the laser system. That's pretty freaking sweet. And the MP5 is just awesome. It's hot. Yeah, that's my Ausrüstung, so as you see. Teile sind allgemein, das hat jeder. Okay. Und Teile sind personenspezifisch. Moin, äh, wo ist hier Lenny? Hm. Äh, meine Aufgabe ist es eigentlich hauptsächlich, äh, Türen zu öffnen, die verschlossen sind. Oder halt, oh, okay, äh, so Breacher, nice. Oder Kisten, die halt, äh, verschlossen sind, okay. äh, zu öffnen oder zu erkunden. Ja, bei mir ist es ähnlich wie beim, beim Kameraden, Plattenträger, Waffen und sowas ist bei uns alles äh, identisch. Das, der einzige Unterschied bei mir ist, okay. äh, ich trage zum Beispiel das G36 KA4 mit dem LLM und äh, huh. EOTech plus Booster, weil ich... Okay, so he's running the G36 with the EOTech, so I'm kind of wondering 
why he specifically utilizes this as opposed to the MP5. I mean, I guess it is nice to have a weapon that can maybe penetrate a little bit more or reach out a little bit further. It is nice. So he might be kind of like their designated marksman in a way, but he's saying he also kind of does the breaching stuff. We, you, you can kind of see here, he's got like the, the Halligan tools. It was kind of interesting how he had that, that nylon, um, that tubular nylon or what have you, and he was utilizing that to open the door. That's pretty freaking smart because on a ship, I mean, the, the doors just open in weird ways anyway. Um, but when you're the doorman and you're trying to open the door for somebody else that's about to clear it out or at least, you know, peek into the room, it's nice to be able to have some standoff because otherwise you're going to be basically in front of that door trying to open it because you're not going to have that much room to have that standoff. So that's actually kind of cool. With the LLM and uh, EOTEC plus Booster, because I'm halt not only the breacher, but also the langsicherer. And uh, okay, yeah, yeah. the G36 is halt effektiver than the MP5. So yeah, he is kind of like the DM. And then there are also other tools to open the doors, like for example the RAM. And our multi-tool is heading That looks heavy. And our endoscope, what we have here, is for example to hidden compartments to check. Okay. Hier haben wir ihn halt noch Wolfenschneider, um ihn halt äh, diverse Schlösser oder Ketten zu öffnen. Und <lacht> Chat Surfing. <lacht> is this dude Chris Hansen or something? <lacht> okay, um, so yeah, the, the translation is not great. I'm still generally understanding what he's saying. Um, more just because he says a word that's kind of similar to an English word, and I can kind of tell it that way, but Okay, so yeah, he's he's basically their breacher, but he's also kind of like the long range kind of dude. Was das eigentlich auch schon? Ich bin auch gefreder Till. Ich bin 21 Jahre alt. Ich bin der Dokumentator der Alpha 3 meines Teams. Ein Dokumentator äh, ist mit einer der wichtigsten Positionen im ganzen Team. Im Rahmen der Boarding Operation ja lange bei der Zeugen. <laughs> translations. Oh my gosh. Okay. We're getting through it. Dafür ist es wichtig, dass uh, wir halt die Beweismittel, die wir finden, That's kind of cool. Sichern. Halt durch Dokumentation und diese Beweismittel dann auch weitergeben. Für mich, hm. für meine äh, Position ist halt wichtig, die Dokumatte und die Halterung okay. dafür. Ja, packe ich halt Waffen in die Beweismittel drauf, Bannbare, fotografiere ich dann, dass ich äh, hm. die dann auch mit der Originalgröße habe. Das ist eine Kamera. So he's kind of like, so I guess they're sort of also like an investigations kind of elements. If they have this guy who kind of does like some of the forensics or evidence collection -y kind of stuff. Or, I mean, I guess you can just say he's kind of like documenting everything that they see whenever they get there, which of course you're going to want to do, especially if there's like sort of pirates, then that is like terrorism, but it's also, yeah, you want to make sure you're documenting everything for that like sort of criminal aspect of it. Die befinden sich in meiner Bauchtasche. Dann <laughs> habe ich äh, noch Personenkarten dabei. Äh, Item okay. Karten, also halt für Gegenstände. Ich habe dabei äh, Nummernkarten, dass ich bestimmte Gegenstände äh, bestimmten Personen zuordnen kann. Zipbeutel, hm. dass wenn ich irgendwelchen Leuten irgendwelche Wertgegenstände abnehme, ähm, dass wir die dann auch wieder einmal frei zuordnen können. Okay. Ich habe noch äh, Plomben dabei, dass wenn wir zum Beispiel an Bord irgendwelche Container, Container öffnen, dass wir die dann nochmal äh, wieder ordnungsgemäß verschließen können. So dass wir dann noch wieder yeah, seal it up. Im Schiffszeug Make sure nobody's messing with it. Eingetragen. Und uh, zu guter Letzt habe ich noch einen Waffensack dabei, dass wenn wir irgendwelche Waffenfunde haben. I gotta say, it is like really, really cool to like see them breaking down all the small stuff because I mean, you saw the initial guy, he kind of went over his kits, but he didn't go over some of the other things like the flexi cuffs that we saw or while they have certain things like their cell tags to mark each member of the team. It is kind of cool to see like, at least with this dude specifically, how they're breaking down everything and why he has all this stuff on his kit. Wenn ich ja nicht ordentlich arbeite, dann können wir uns halt die ganze Operation wieder sparen. Ähm, ich muss halt immer wach sein, ich muss korrekt, äh, korrekt arbeiten, ich muss unbedingt darauf achten, dass ich hm. die Gegenstände, dass ich allen, alles, jedem, jeder Person ordentlich zuordnen kann. Und oh, Leute, ich bin Hauptgefahr okay. Joel. Ich bin hier der Alpha 5 im Team. Das bedeutet, ich bin der Medic. Das ist hier okay, Medic, der nice. er, äh, erste Alpha Bravo Rucksack, mit dem ich arbeite, den habe ich immer dabei. <lacht> Uh, first alpha punching bag. <laughs> Come on, medic. <laughs> You're supposed to help me enough people up. <laughs> okay, this is gonna be sweet. Critical bleeding airways. Okay, so we have a very similar acronym. I'm gonna turn this off real quick. So we have MARCH, which is uh, mass hemorrhaging, airway, respiration, uh, circulation, and then like, 
you know, heat, hypothermia, things like that. Of course, bleeding is going to be something you're going to want to knock out very quickly because I mean, if you run out of blood, that's that's it. That's pretty much game over. So if you have like arterial bleeding, if you have that mass hemorrhaging, you're gonna wanna deal with that because that will kill you the fastest. Airway, again, that will definitely kill you, but you wanna make sure that you can take away the bleeding or stop the bleeding and then work on the airway because people can kind of survive a little bit longer without air. But if you run out of blood, again, that's kind of game over. And the rest kind of follows suit with that. Atmung, da sind ähm, dann Wände, ein Gütetubus drin, hm. gehen auf Belastungsnadeln, ähm, Tape und Morphin. Okay, so he's got Tape, Morphin, got the normal combat gauze, tourniquets, okay. Und Morphin. Hier drin haben wir einmal Rettungsdecken und ein Zernsplint, um ein A Bein zu schieben, there. einen Arm zu schieben. Und hier haben wir noch Handschuhe. Unser okay. Mittel, wenn wir den Verletzten von Bord bringen müssen. I and mean, then this is their later. I will say like, no matter like the, the different types of leaders you see or the different types of militaries using different types of leaders, like I feel like there's always a better solution that we're just not at yet. I mean, these rolling plastic ones, you know, they're, they're good, they're lightweights, they're durable. You can use it on a few different like terrains if you're going to be dragging it. But I will say if you're dragging this on anything like pavement or something or even like rocks, for the casualty, it is not fun at all and it can get very hot. I had a plate carrier that got a hole burned through it because during my, my uh, recon selection, we were pulling these things on the asphalt road, kind of stupid, and it ended up burning a hole through this and also through my, my plate carrier, which is not fun. So I, I know that there are different options out there like foldable nylon ones, um, things like this. But yeah, I feel like it's always just not like, we just don't have the best solution for litter. If you guys have seen some like really cool sort of litter solutions, let me know what those are so I can kind of check them out because yeah, again, some of these, they're just, they're not like very user-friendly. All the ones that I've used in the service were never that user-friendly. And if they were, they were usually pretty freaking heavy or cumbersome to carry. Hier, hier befestigt an sechs Ankerpunkten und dann wird der mit einem Flaschenzug ähm, auf dem Wasser ähm, abgelassen. Dann wird er am Wasser befestigt und dann wird er zum Motor verbracht. Okay. Wenn sich jemand im Maschinenraum verletzt von der Besatzung oder so, dann bin ich auch dafür da, um dem zu helfen. Deswegen muss ich auch extra viel Material mitnehmen. Hm. It's cool how it has the points for like the, the pulley system and whatnot. I guess that's kind of standard nowadays. Gosh, look, Wir sind hier in der äh, Kiel, äh, befinden uns auf den äh, ausgemusterten äh, Schnellboden und führen uns okay. aus. Alle Schotten werden dann von außen verschlossen mit Bandschlingen oder Seilmaterial oder mit Ratschen. Und hm. jede Schotte sieht halt auch ein bisschen anders aus und das muss halt auch geübt werden. Okay. That's kind of cool, they get these like old ships to, to train on and whatnot. I mean, because they're pretty much as you would expect them or as you would see them with a, a normal ship. I mean, because it is a normal ship. <laughs> Having like, we had like a ship in the box kind of set up like a, a makeshift ship and it's just not the same. Especially when it's actually on the water and it's moving, that makes a huge difference. Was habe ich euch gesagt? Das ist die Prio 1 beim Verschließen der Schotten. Das Wofür so funktioniert? Ja, na klar, das ist funktioniert, das ist logisch, ja. Aber als allererstes versucht ihr, den Öffnungsmechanismus zu blockieren. Das heißt, hier den Vorreiber oder die Klinken oder sonstiges. Ja. Okay, so I'm guessing what they're doing here is they want to clear out certain parts of the ship while also locking down areas behind them or, you know, openings behind them where the enemy could potentially move up from. Because if you've ever been in a ship, for the most part, you know, it's pretty linear as far as how you travel throughout the ship. But there's also like a lot of really kind of nooks and crannies, kind of like a spider web of ways to get to other parts of the ship. And I think what they're doing here is making sure that people aren't opening doors up behind them so they can clear out this entire level first and then move on to the next level without making sure that people are popping up behind them. 
Wenn das nicht funktioniert, dann muss ich improvisieren. Dann kann sowas funktionieren. Okay. Which is pretty smart. It's not something that we even consider, to be honest, when we were doing ship stuff. I mean, we did consider it, but we kind of just, you know, went, went with that risk. Sick. I wonder, I wonder if they can use flashbangs on this thing. If they got like the go ahead for that. I mean, I guess it's not going to be turned into a museum. Ich hoffe, die Serie heute hat euch gefallen. Ihr habt viele neue Eindrücke gewinnen können. Wenn ihr Lust auf mehr habt, auf jeden Fall bei der nächsten Folge wieder reinschalten. Okay. Yeah, so again, the translations weren't great, but it definitely did give us a good understanding, especially with the gear, the different roles that you can expect to see, which are, you know, pretty standard for teams like this. But again, it is really cool to see like the breakdown of all the gear and whatnot. And again, it's cool to see them in action because this, like something like this seems like, almost like a no no brainer like if you want to prevent people from coming behind you you just need to secure the door because they might not they're not going to be expecting the door to be like you know closed down with a ratchet strap or something so they're going to be trying to you know leave from different parts of the ship or what have you or try and surprise you and now you're mitigating that threat because obviously it's gonna be very hard if not impossible for them to get rid of this ratchet strap or defeat the strap from the inside especially if they don't have like any sort of breaching equipment or like an exothermic torch which they're probably not if they're like pirates so that's actually pretty freaking smart and again it's not something that we it's not something that we thought to implement when we were doing stuff like this okay definitely a cool video and definitely a solid team now with, with certain things especially with like cqb or even something like clearing out a ship even if you've done it a million times there's always different ways to handle certain things or there's always going to be things that you consider or, or don't consider, especially with us when it comes to mitigating certain threats. Sometimes you'll just accept the risk, but if there's like a pretty easy solution that doesn't take a whole lot of time or it doesn't take a whole lot of manpower and people found ways to, to mitigate those threats, then it's something you might wanna consider implementing. And I think these guys did a good job of thinking about those small things to make sure that they're increasing their survivability. So we can see here, they're, they're moving pretty slow. They're doing things very you know methodically. And I think that is a good way to go about it. I mean, of course you do have CQB teams that are more focused on like hostage rescue kind of stuff where they're moving very quick and they have to be quick because they need to get to the bad guys before they can do anything bad. But with teams like this, when they're going through and they're searching and they're clearing out like a, an entire ship, you need to be very slow and methodical. And with these guys, I guess they, they might have a little bit more flexibility because it might not necessarily be a hostage rescue kind of thing. It might just be like, you know, a pirate vessel or pirates took over a certain vessel. But yeah, definitely, definitely cool. If you guys have any other videos about this, this like naval boarding team or these similar teams, let me know down in the comment section, especially for like any other countries, because I'm really, really fascinated with these specific types of naval boarding teams and how they actually have their team organization as far as like the DMs and the breachers and the, you know, the actual shooters and the medics and stuff. Seeing like the different team breakdowns and the different capabilities that they have as far as like helo support and everything, it's always super, super cool to see those small distinctions and everything. But hopefully you guys enjoyed. Of course, if you did, hit that thumbs up. Thank you for recommending this video. You guys always send me some solid stuff. But if you do want to recommend anything, you can throw it down below or you can head over to the Discord and recommend some stuff there. But yeah, I do appreciate the supports. If you guys want to cop some merch, I'll... I haven't, I don't know when's the last time I kind of did a shout out for the merch, but if you guys want to check out the merch, I do have a link in the description and you can also consider the channel membership and the Patreon if you guys want to get some extra sort of behind the scenes or bloopers or extra footage that I might have lying around. But thank you guys again for supporting the channel. That is it for this video. I'll see you all in the next one.